Hi folks, Jack Spearco here, and as I uh, said, the next lesson in the uh, permaculture series is going to be on taking the concept of swales, and really it's more contour design than swales. This is really not a swale thing, but it's swale-like, and taking it into more of a backyard production system. So let's start out with this diagram here, and I tried to draw things a lot larger, like you guys have been asking to. I'll try to speak a little bit quieter too, so I don't peek the microphone, but I just get excited when I present. I enjoy doing this, so that's, that's part of that problem there. Anyway, this is a typical way that a person would build a garden in their backyard. They have their house up here, the streets out here. The red lines, by the way, are contour lines. So the slope is going this way, so that means that it's basically going this way, right? So this is your high point, and this is your low point falling off to the backyard. So you can see the way that somebody would typically do this, and even if you're going to do this, this would probably be a better location as long as you have good solar exposure and what have you, because that way at least the water's flowing towards the garden. Where here, you know, depending on what the neighbor's doing, you might be getting no catchment toward the garden at all. But as you can see, the water wants to follow ridge lines, so it's going to follow contour lines like this. So the water comes trucking down, hits this, and what's it do? It just makes a jog, immediately hits the side of this bed, and just cruises on out of there. Basically, the water's leaving the area where your typical square garden is as quickly as possible. What do people do? They square the garden based on the house and the fence. They want everything to be symmetrical. Nature doesn't work that way. Nature works with patterns, dynamic patterns, not straight lines. So. A better way to do this, and I'll give you a better understanding of what's happening here with larger imagery in just a second, is let's go ahead and get closer to the house, first of all. This is zone one, right? I'm, I'm going to take care of this garden. This is a, a kitchen garden. I want to take care of it every day. So I want it close to the house, not way far away, but I'm going to follow the contour lines with my beds. And now I've got a lot of catchment. In fact, all this r great rainwater that comes off of the house here, I can direct into this structure that I've built. And each one of these beds, again, it's not the scale. I'm not a good artist. Assume these beds are four foot wide, and the paths between them are four foot wide. So as the water hits, and we'll come over here now. So now we have our house, and here comes all this water off of the house directed down. It hits this line. Now why are these curved this way? Because that's the way the contour lines go. If the contour lines went like this, they would be curved like this if they made S turns. So the shape of the beds is not what to focus on here. Just assume this is how the contours on the property are. So as this water flows and it, it gets up against this, this wall, it doesn't rush through the way it does over here. It just kind of stops and it slows down and eventually the capacity, just like the swale built up with the sill, builds up to where the water begins to flow around. Now, because we've staggered the edges here, this bed is able to pick up catchment that this bed is not. And any of the water that eventually comes around this bed and, and dumps over is also caught here. Uh, this bed, again, is catching water, and so is this one, and so is this one. So that's why I've brought them out in a staggered pattern. So the water is able to flow through, but it's not flowing. It's moving very, very passively, very, very slow, wicking in. Uh, this is not something for a very steep slope. We'd want to go in and do some terracing in that situation and slow the water down even more. But think about this. If we had, This is 36 feet because we've got four feet, four feet, four, got it? Four feet in between, four foot beds. So this would be 36 feet from there to there roughly. If that's what we've done, if we have a 1 and 12 foot fall, that almost looks flat. You would say, I've got flat land, there's, no, there's plenty of contour there to work with. If we had a 1 inch and 12 foot fall, there would only be 3 inches of fall between here and here. That means that the fall rate here, from, from this here to here, would only be a third of an inch. If we had a significant fall, say 6 inches and 12 feet, 6 inches and 12 feet, you would see the slope. Your mind, your eye would key in on that's a fairly significant fall. But it's not anything we can't overcome with this design. We would have 18 inches of fall between here and here. So across 36 feet, a foot and a half a drop. We would still only have 2 inches and 4 feet then. So this spot right there at the bottom of this bed would only be two inches higher than there. That's enough for the water to run, but it's also going to slowly fill back up. We get much more than that. We've got to get a little bit creative when we put our paths in. Maybe we're going to do more of a leveling of the paths off, come here and scrape these down so that the paths themselves are level. That's not a bad idea to do with this anyway. Instead of just building up the beds, we can actually take some material off of the paths, put that material into our beds. 
And that way these paths are dead level across the, the whole way. Just forget that I did that there. And that's going to pacify the water even more. Now, I want to tell you something about your questions. When people start asking questions like, but what if in permaculture, the answer is it usually doesn't matter. It, it'll usually just be fine. Just work with the design. When people start asking questions like, can I? The answer is almost always yes. So here's some can I questions I would expect to get out of this. Can I come in here and take the end of this bed and bring it off contour a little bit with like a fish hook design like this. Again, it's not the scale, keeping my four feet. So that the water that comes in there, when it hits here, is more channeled and forced over that side, absolutely. Uh, another question that might be logical to ask would be, can I come right here and just build up the landscape a little bit right here. Maybe not even with a bed, just build it up so it's a little bit higher right there so that I create more of a flow of the water down. Yes. Another question would be, when I build these paths in between the beds, can I actually dig them out, take an A-frame level, level the bottoms and make them into mini swales? Yes, you could do anything. That's the beauty of permaculture. Whatever works best. If this soil is very, very hard to dig in and your, your slope is very, very moderate, you might just bring material in and start building it up. Um, if, the, if, you're, if you've got great soil to work with, well, then it would make a lot of sense to go ahead and start pulling material out of your paths, making them dead level, and bringing them right into your beds and only bringing in additional material. Another question a lot of people would ask, can I take some wood, you know, some woody material, and, and put it where these contours are, and then build up on top of that and do kind of a micro hoo culture with the contour paths? Yes. See, can I is almost always yes. What if is always almost looking for a problem you haven't actually discovered yet. Because another one, and I'm going to pepper the permaculture principles in throughout the lessons. See problems as solutions. So when you say, can I, before you've tried, you actually haven't determined the real problem. You've determined the problem that you expect to encounter. Right? instead of the problem you're actually going to encounter. If you actually do it and evaluate the problem, then you can redirect the problem's energy to the solution. But this is, now we've taken this huge concept, like a kilometer of swaling, or several kilometers of swaling, big swales we can drive a tractor through, and we've taken it down to a little bitty four foot wide bed. Why four foot wide? Double reach. I can reach the center from both sides. Four foot wide path, I can get my little garden cart or my wheelbarrow down for servicing my gardens. And uh, just really easy to maintain, nice and symmetrical, yet not in a boring, blocky pattern, mimicking the patterns of nature. When you do that, you always find success. With that, it's been Jack Spierko with another video in the Permaculture Series.